Okay, so have you ever been on, uh, you're browsing through Thingiverse or your favorite uh, 3D printer file site, and you come across something, oh, hey, these are great, these buttons look awesome. And you go to download it, and you see a file that says SCAD. Today in this video, I want to teach you uh, how you can use those. They are extremely powerful, but definitely a little bit more complex to use than just your simple STL file. But if you want to unlock the power of customizable uh, features that other programmers have worked very hard to put in their code, this is what you want to use. So I'm going to get started by just explaining the typical STL work file. You go to Thingiverse, you get your STL. Note that it's not customizable. It's just if, you, if there's a hole in there you don't like, tough luck. Deal with it. Um, unless you want to open it and edit in some other program, forget about it. So you're going to slice uh, this thing with Slicer, Cura, MakerWare, or maybe Simplify 3D if you have a lot of money. And you're going to print it. So that's typically how you do it. See, when you do it with an SCAD file, things are a little bit more complex. But with the complexity comes an immense amount of power to get exactly what you want. So this is what you do. You go there, similar. So I've highlighted the different steps. Yeah, you're going to go get your file from wherever. You're going to go and open, um, you're going to open your SCAD file. You change variables, and this is where the power, this is the whole step that makes this so powerful, is that you can change the variables. I'll show you what I mean in a second. Then you're going to compile and render it into an STL that we're familiar with. We already know how to do that. And then slice with Slicer, Cura, MakerWare, or again, Simplify 3D, and you're going to print it. Okay, so it's, there's a few more steps you can see, you know. We're adding a couple steps to this process. Okay, first of all, you're going to need to go to OpenSCAD because you need to get this software. So go to uh, OpenSCAD.org and press Enter. You're going to go down to Other OSs to make sure we get the correct version um, or to Downloads. And you're going to go down. You can get the Mac OS version right up here. Okay, so Windows. Stick to these two, the EXEs. You're either going to get 32-bit or 64-bit. If you don't know what type of operating system you have, you can always check by typing in System. And go to System. And you can see I have 64-bit operating system. Okay, so I would get the 64-bit version. Once that's done downloading, you're going to double-click it and install it. I'm going to fast-forward through that step because I already have it done, and you don't want to watch my hideously disgusting internet and slow uh, download speeds. So I already have that installed. So go back here. Let's grab that SCAD file or whatever SCAD file you want to play around with. I want to do – this is for a friend that wants to make buttons. Um, for her creations. You know, she sews things and makes all, all kinds of cool stuff. Um, so she wants to make her own buttons that are customizable, any size, any shape, uh, within reason. And um, you can make them any color you want, too, with, depending on the filament you choose. So we grab the SCAD file, and wherever that downloaded to, mine's right here. I'm just going to click that and open it up. Okay, now this pops open. Now I need to really explain something carefully to you. This is very important. This is how SCAD is massively different. You see this window over here? In most 3D design programs, almost all of your work is done in the visual window. Yeah, you got other menus around and some text dialogues that you can customize things, but almost, you know, 99% of the time, you're working in this window. Whereas in Open SCAD, this program, all this window is is to show you stuff. Yeah, it's interactive in the sense that you can rotate the camera view, you can zoom in and out, there's other things too, but basically you don't do any interactive design work in this window. This is just simply a rendering. It's it's just after you're done and all the after you've done and you compile it, you can see what it looks like over here. You cannot change anything about the SCAD file from here. You can just look at it. That's it. Okay. So if you want to change stuff, what's interesting is is if you look, see for example here, you can see the program's drawing a cylinder. This is this is code, and when we compile all this set of code, it makes this button. It's exact, precise instructions on how to make that button. And what's cool is you don't have to use numbers. For the whole size, you don't have to put in a number. It's parametric. So you can put in a variable. So instead of the thickness being a number in this code down here, it is now simply variable thickness that we define up here as 3 millimeters. So what's cool, let's check this out, see what it is. And in this file, weirdly enough, this means diameter. So um, you can see in the programmer's notes, this is a good programmer, they give us a hint that we should go between 14 and 72. Um, I want a massive button, this giant monstrosity of a button. 60 millimeters, that's over, that's well over, uh, you know, two inches. Okay, so we're going to go to thickness. You can see the thickness. Um, oh, and wait a minute, thickness is four. Now notice when I'm changing this, nothing's happening over here. It's the same stupid button we started with, right? Okay, so what you have to do every time you change something, and by the way, 
These semicolons are really necessary. Leave them there. Just change the number part. You can just double click the number and it'll just grab that part, you know? Let's just change that. So watch what happens. To see the changes we've made, you have to press the F5 key at the very top. You know those, key, those F keys at the top of your keyboard that people seldom use? Press those. F5 refreshes. Hey, there's my giant one. And you can see it's gotten a bit thicker. Uh, lip type. You know what? I like the pipe lip. Check this out. Press this and press F5. And look what it did. It put like a pipe curved lip around the edge of it. And the lip size, I want to, like I said, this is a giant freaking button. And it says the zero to five. So I'm going to actually make that as big as I can, five. You can try bigger. I don't know. But the, this is the programmer made that number. So I probably want to stick to what their suggestion is. The hole count, this is a big button. We're going to need four holes, I think. Not that I know anything about sewing at all. I'm terrible. Um, the holes should be spread out pretty far because... We need a lot of support for a giant button like this. I'm going to go to the maximum of 8 millimeters. Uh, flatness. This is interesting. They put notes over here. If you want it to be concave, put a negative one. That's what it is now. If you want it to be flat, put a zero. See, these are the little hints to you from the programmer, the guy who wrote this code here in this case. So it's one is convex. So I'm going to go one. And I'm going to press a five. Okay, so this giant monstrosity of a button, that's what I want. I don't know. Maybe this is for some big jacket or something, whatever. Um, so there it is. Now, you can press F5. Now, here's the deal. You need to press F6. F5 is just for preview so you can get an idea of what you're doing. F6, when you're ready to export it to an STL file, because recall, we still have to, in this process, we still need to compile it and render an STL and then do it. So we still have to do the same thing. It's just you generate your own STL based on what you want with these variables. And usually the variables are at the top of the page. So I'm going to go STL. It says nothing to render. Press F6. So press F6. This takes a little bit longer, especially with those curved surfaces that I added to that lip. That's going to take a little bit. Curved surfaces are not truly curved. In real life, they're polygons. And it takes thousands and thousands of polygons to simulate a curved um, pipe surface like that. All right. So there, there it is, and now we can click up here. You click Export as STL. And I'm going to just go ahead and do that to the desktop. I'm going to call it Big Button. OK. Now from here, the process is just like anything else, any other STL file that you downloaded from someone else, except you compiled this one yourself from this uh, very talented programmer's code, right? Okay, and here we go. And here's my file, I hate that, the big button. Slide it on there, and now you can print it in your favorite software or whatever. Hey, if you like this video, Go ahead and give it a like, uh, share it if you think it'll feel like somebody that you know that does sewing and is in a makerspace and could also be 3D printing. Um, and you know what? Hey, if you don't like this video, something wrong with it, give it a dislike and do, just do me a favor and comment on how I could improve my videos. Thanks.